So let's go ahead and open up Shader Forge. And if you've never used Shader Forge, um, this is not intended to be a tutorial on how to use Shader Forge, um, but more of how to build this specific shader. Um, so I'm gonna load Shader and just show you what we're gonna build. Um, I'm gonna go to this tutorial. Here is our shader. Um, now I don't claim to be an expert on shaders by any means, um, so there may be better, faster ways to do this. Um, I haven't seen a big performance hit on the shader, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, but this is what we're going to be building, and I'll explain step by step as we go. Um, it'll probably take us a couple videos to build all of this up, but we'll try to get some basic functionality going here pretty quick. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm going to click the return to menu. Now that we've got Shader Forge open, um, I'm going to click on New Shader, and we're going to start a new shader. Um, my recommendation is that you start with either the uh, lit physically based rendered or the uh, basic. Um, Depends what you want to do for uh, my purposes. Low poly scene, um, the non uh, PBR one works just fine. Uh, for low poly, I tend not to like the gloss, the metallic. It, it's a little bit of an overkill. So we're going to go with the simpler shader. Um, but the process is very much the same. If you go to the PBR, you'll just have a few extra options. Let's go to the basic lit. Um, and I'm going to call this, we're going to call this new shader. Um, new shader tutorial. All right, so here's what we start with. A um, really simple shader where all we're able to do is change the color. But the first thing we need to do is add in our ability to have a texture. Um, in my other scene, you, I have, uh, or in my uh, material, if I pull this down, uh, if I go to my landscape here, you can see that I have a diffuse texture and a tint. Um, Pretty standard fare there, but we want to make sure we have that ability. Um, I also have an emit strength, snow color, snow texture, and a lot of other variables that we'll be adding in. But first thing we want to do is add in this tint and um, diffuse texture, and then we'll save it and see where we're going. So um, to add in a texture, I'm going to press T, and I can use my scroll mouse wheel if you haven't used Shader Forge. Um, that brings in my texture box, and I'm going to call this diffuse texture. You can call it whatever you'd like. Um, that's the uh, that's the name that's going to show up in the inspector. I'm going to bring this color down, and this is going to be my tint. Um, and call it diffuse tint. And then I'm going to I need to multiply these together. Grab a multiply multiply box. Drag the RBG, RGB, sorry, uh, together. And there you can see the uh, the texture. And this looks like it's already selected a texture for me. Um, I am going to grab the uh, Snow Shader demo texture. A lot of those other textures that you're seeing come with Shader Forge. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut that connection, so I don't need that anymore. And I'm gonna drag my diffuse in there like that. Okay, um, and I've got up here on Shader Forge, I've got the auto compile uh, working for me, and there you can see the texture working. All right, now that we've got our uh, shader working, um, make sure we got the compile here. If you're not on auto, press the compile, make sure that button's green, um, and bring this down so I can see uh, the regular Unity screen. And here's my snow shader um, that we just created. Now, to go along with that, we're going to create a new material. Okay, I'm going to name that Snow Shader Tutorial, just like the shader. And up here, um, I'm going to switch from the standard and go down to Shader Forge and select Snow Shader Tutorial. I got a couple extra ones here because this is kind of a project that I uh, experiment with uh, shaders with. So we're going to select that one. And then I'm going to drag and drop that. Oh, got to make sure I'm in the scene view. I'm going to drag and drop that onto my object. So all I'm doing now is um, displaying that, that texture. I can tint my scene, tint my colors, um, tint my texture rather. Um, so the basic functionality is all up and working. That's great. Now that we're back in Shader Forge, we want to do something similar to this diffuse texture and diffuse tint uh, with our snow. So we're going to create another texture, and that's going to be our snow texture. I'm going to add in a... Um, color, my color, and it's going to be my snow color. Again, you can name these however you want. Um, 
It's just going to be what's going to show up in Inspector. Um, if you can see, if you hover here, there's a, um, just to the right there, there's the uh, variable name with a underscore underneath it. That's going to be the, na the name of the we that we reference in our code later on. Right. And I'm going to do a multiply as well. Take the RGB channels of each of these and put them together. Um, I'm going to grab a snow texture. I'm just using kind of a noise texture for right now. Um, give something to look at. Um, and a snow color, uh, just one, 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 one. Um, just straight up white. So we multiply it. This is kind of what we're going to get. Um, and then we're going to have to put these together. And that's going to get a little bit more complex as we go. But we've got this up and working. Um, And let's, look, let's think about our next step of what we need to do. We've got this. So we want our snow to show up on the on the faces that are looking upwards. Uh, snow is not going to stick to the bottom of the tree. We want to stick to the top of the tree. So what we've got to do is build in a little bit of mathematics um, to select just the faces that are facing upwards. And we're going to do that with the normals of the faces. So I'm going to choose a... Uh, nor get a normal direction. Okay, this is going to get the normal direction of each pixel, pixel of the f or the uh, face of it. Um, and if you wanted to use a normal map, I'm not going to be doing that in this tutorial, but you can use the perturbed value to do that. Okay, um, and then I'm going to have to. I need to compare the the normal direction with a vector. So I'm going to get a vector three. Again, I'm just holding the first letter of these things, uh, the name of the boxes. And I want to compare those to a, a vector that's going straight up. And you can ignore the color, the color doesn't matter. Um, and then I want to get a dot product. For those of you guys who didn't take uh, linear algebra, dot product essentially looks at, um, or gives us a calculation of how similar the two vectors are, if you will. Um, and then you can see already it's kind of doing what we want. The top of this uh, circle is white and the bottom is black. Um, and that's indicating here that our uh, on the top, our normal direction is the most similar to this vector that we just proposed here. So if, again, I could change this to zero, zero, and I could, or one, zero, zero, and I get something else shaped a little differently. Um, you could do something interesting there. Uh, potentially you could adjust this and make some sort of a wind direction if you wanted your snow to do something different. All right. Um, now this will help an awful lot. And let's just start here simple and put this together so that uh, we can see what we're interested in, okay? Now that we've got our main pieces together, we wanna to start putting these together to get some sort of a snow effect. So we're gonna make a couple adjustments here. Um, and the first one is with our normal direction here. We're gonna add in a slider, add in a slider. And I'm going to call this one, this is going to be our snow, snow coverage. Basically, this is going to control where our snow is showing up. And we want to be able to control whether it's covering the top half, the top quarter, maybe even wrapping all the way underneath. And we're going to also use a uh, function called a step function. All right? And this compares A and B. If A is less than B, uh, it outputs 1. If it's not, it outputs 0. Um, so what we're going to do is connect our snow coverage to A, and our dot product to B. And now if I move my slider up and down, you can see already I have control of where um, my snow is showing up. Now if I go to zero, I kind of max out there. So I'm gonna adjust my snow coverage to negative one to one, so a minimum of negative one. And now I can cover my entire sphere in snow. So now that we have our ability to adjust our snow coverage, we got our snow texture, and we got our diffuse texture, we wanna put this all together, and we're gonna do that with an if statement. I'm going to choose my if, and this is going to compare two values, a and b. So my a value is going to be out of this step function. My b value uh, is going to just be a set value. Oop, not that value, I want the other value. So you'll notice here there's two values, um, one right here in the middle. And this is a value that will show up in the inspector. And this value is a value that will not show up in the inspector. That one took me a little bit to figure out. So we're going to compare the value being output by the step function and this value here. Now, it's important to remember that colors are just numbers. So this white is a 1, and the black down here is 0. So um, when this value is 1, that's where we want the snow to show up. So that's going to occur when A is bigger than B, B being this smaller 
zero value. So I'm gonna connect my multiplication of my snow texture to the A is greater than or equal to, or greater than B. And then this output of the diffuse texture in the multiply box is gonna go into the equals and into the less than or equals. So now you can see if I adjust my slider, in, the, in my if statement there, I can see my snow going up and down um, in correspondence. So let's see what's going on here. Let's drop this down, come back to my landscape, open up my tutorial, or um, why didn't that, didn't seem to have compiled. Ah, okay. Hmm. Silly me. Forgot one little step here. So this output of this if statement, we haven't changed what's actually going to our output. So we're going to drag this the output of this if statement into our diffuse, because like that. And we'll make sure we're compiling. Okay. And the reason this snow coverage slider did not show up in our inspector is ShaderForge doesn't um, include any outputs that don't make it to the or any inputs that don't make it to the output. So if I go back now, I should be able to see there's my snow coverage, okay? Um, so you can see as I use my snow coverage, uh, I am adjusting how much is covered, okay? Uh, and this again is just doing it by normal, so we don't have any height options going on here, okay? Our snow coverage, uh, we can move back and forth, okay? Uh, go down to negative one, everything's fully covered, go up to one, and nothing's covered. Um, so we got our basic functionality working. For some of you, that might be all you need in your snow shader. Um, if so, great, you're done, you got a snow shader. Uh, if not, um, the next video, we're gonna start looking at how to add um, global or world height dependencies. Um, so we can control where the snow shows, maybe you just want it on the top of your hills, maybe you wanna be able to move it up and down. Um, that'll be our next video. After that, uh, we'll dive into the more detailed idea of adding in the fade in or the frost. So thanks for joining. Hope, hope that was helpful. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time.